Hello, it's Darren at Moonhair Studio here, and today I'm kicking off a new season of Living with the QCOM Pro X with a very special firmware update. In fact, if you install this without buying one of these, your QCOM simply isn't going to work right. <laughs> So I've had quite a few questions over the past 12 months that are interrelated. The, the first one is why people's QCOM Pro X's are going haywire when they install the new firmware. And the other is, can I do a new series on living with the QCOM Pro X where I explain all the controls using the new QCOM layout? The two are obviously interconnected. If you upgrade to the new firmware now and you've got an old machine like I have with the original panel on the front, then it is going to remap that panel and the controls are not going to be correct. So you're going to need to buy one of these new panels to fit on here to operate your QCON correctly with the new firmware upgrade. Um, in fact, I say buy the panel. It's actually free of charge, but you will have to pay a shipping fee. And in the UK, that's 30 pounds, and I suspect it's 30 dollars, euros, wherever you happen to be. You'll have to do that direct from the ICON website. So order your panel before you do any firmware update above 1.18. So it's not easy to find out where you order this panel from. Um, so I'll put a link below just so you can get straight to the page. This one gives you all the information about the new panel and a lot of different warnings about upgrading the firmware. And then you'll click down here and that will give you your link to the actual page where you can order the panel that you need for your particular door. Right, so I've gone to the ICON uh, website and I'll put a link down below um, and we'll have a look at the downloads here and you'll notice that for the updating your firmware there's a there's a warning here before you update read this. Um, what they're uh, pointing you towards is that you need IMAP version 2.16 or above to be able to install the right firmware. So you're going to need to download that and um, don't make the mistake that I made first of downloading this version here. Um, you need to be on the QCOM Pro X and I, uh, XS IMAP version 2.3 at the moment, but 2.3 or above, depending on what the software um, is at the time that you see this. So we'll go for the Windows setup. I'll just click on that, um, click OK to save it, and then we'll just go in and open it up and run it uh, and just click no here and we're just going to step through yes and just accept all of these options and install and it doesn't take long and then you're good to go so regular viewers to the channel will know that i'm not into clickbait unboxing videos and all that sort of nonsense i mean you'll get a box you open it that's basically it the only thing that we're interested in we don't need all of these other overlays get rid of those is the um panel itself and the screwdriver to fit it. So this is going to be a pretty straightforward process. We've got um, six little screws which we're going to have to take out of this panel and we'll use those screws to actually put this one, the new one, back on. So it's literally a case of just uh, going round and, and removing those screws. Make sure you hold on to them, keep them safe because those are going to be used to put that new panel on. So we'll just go around and do all of those. Obviously make sure that the uh, power is off to the unit when you're doing this. I don't think there's any likelihood of electrocution, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. Right now, all those screws are out. It should just be a case of lifting this out. Of course, what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna lose all my wonderful stickers. Um, <laughs> and everybody knows I love my stickers. So uh, yeah. That will have to go back on later on. Anyway, put that to one side. The new one just pops in. You can see there's some contacts along here and they just join up the contacts in there. You just place that in place and reverse the process, as they say in all the best Haynes manuals. So just screw these back into place. It really is a 
two minute job. This is nothing that anybody that can use a screwdriver cannot do. So just try to make sure that you don't um, misalign the screws and strip the threads. I guess that's the only possible thing that could go wrong. And we're done. That's really just a couple of minutes work. So very straightforward. So those of you that have been following my channel for a while will realise that I do put lots of little stickers all over my QCon and they're all now in the wrong place. So they're all they're going to have to come off. So now we're ready to uh, open up the IMAP software and install the firmware. What you must make sure though is that you've got your QCon Pro X turned on but not any of the extenders, just, just have the QCon Pro X and make sure that it's linked directly from the back of the unit straight to your PC. So normally I go through this hub over here but I've got it uh, plugged directly into the USB port on the PC itself or the Mac if you're using a Mac. So we'll click down here on firmware upgrade. That gives you the instructions that I've just mentioned. We'll click OK and now we can go through the process and we're basically just click through these buttons. So we're going to connect, uh, look for the QCon which is here and you can see I'm on version 1.15 at the moment of the, uh, the firmware. So now we erase and that's basically just clicking through to um, start the process. Click on activate. Again, we're just going to now select icon firmware because we've erased it back to the sort of factory default. We'll click OK and now we need to select version. Now this should go to the website and select the latest version of the firmware that should work for your um, panel. And as you can see, we've got here um, QCon um, 2.06. Well, that's as good as we can get. Now, if for some reason you go through this process and you then realize you don't have this new panel and you've just done it in error, they've provided a rollback so you can get back to the latest version before the panel was changed over. But we're going to go with this beta and click OK. And now we click on upgrade and now you just let it do its thing. It will take a little while. So we'll we'll skip forward to the end. And that's completed and we can just click OK and close all of this down and we should be on the right version. So what I've noticed now is that on my panel here it's saying Mackie control mode selected. Now that's different to how it was before when it would say Nuendo Cubase mode selected. Mackie control now is the standard for most of these units. So theoretically, if I open up Cubase, everything should work. So let's give it a go. So I've turned off my units and turned them back on again. So the XS and the QCon Pro X are both turned on. I'm now going to uh, open up Cubase. Uh, we're going to see what happens. Now, theoretically, this XS should work. But this might not yet because it might not be set up in Cubase itself. So we'll we'll just have a look. We'll open up a project, a uh, fairly straightforward project. Um, just look for movement on the desks. Yep. And so, yeah, as I thought. So the XS has, has booted up fine. This is just saying Mackie control mode selected and is not showing me any of the, the channels. So we're going to open up Studio Setup. And yes, we can see that Mackie control two is set to my QCon Pro XS still, but the first one, which is the main controller, isn't. So we're just going to select that. So icon QCon Pro X 2.06. The master fader just moved, showing that it's picked it up. We'll apply and say OK. And theoretically now we should be in the new mode. So I've uploaded a um, a track again. Uh, I closed down, powered down the two units, powered them back up, opened Cubase and um, everything seems to be working now. The um, transport panel is working. Um, if I hit play, yeah, that's all, that's all working. Um, it's obviously a new layout, which I'm not used to. And so there are certain things which I'm going to have to get uh, accustomed to because on the old panel um, 
uh, sort of moving backwards and forwards through our markers was down here but that's save and solo now um, but actually the new layout makes a lot more sense because we've got these two buttons up the top here which are now your previous and um, next markers which actually makes a lot more sense so it'll take a little while to get used to this but um, I'm sure I will do and hopefully you'll be just as successful in installing it as well I will draw your attention to one thing Cubase users um, the ridiculous bizarre problem that started this whole moon hair channel off was that when you clicked buttons on the controller it would trigger notes and it's doing it when you hit various keys on the controller say to bring up your mixer it, it's triggering an, a random note on uh, one of the instruments but even worse is that if you're actually mixing I bring up the mixer here it's going way out of tune so that's totally unusable uh, what's going on here and what's the solution just to let you know um, if you don't want to go and search for the actual video on it um, we have to go into the studio go into studio setup into your MIDI port setup and make sure that this all MIDI in is not active um, on your QCon Pro X because that's the thing that triggers those sounds and can also create detuning when you use your faders but if we try the, the mixer out now and I'm still working out where <laughs> all the controls are you can see that that problem is completely gone thank you for watching if you're into like and subscribe please do um, if I did get to a thousand I could start posting other stuff like stills and what have you but I'm not really looking for it this is not a professional YouTube channel so please like and subscribe if, if you're into that but don't worry if not and um, I will be releasing more of these um, tutorial videos once I've worked out what the heck is going on with this panel myself thanks a lot and bye